Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. Right before you is Bakari Henderson. He is the 22-year-old Texas man who was unfortunately and tragically murdered in Greece. Now, this has come up again because the men who are accused of his murder are going on a retrial. During the first trial, six men were found guilty of assault. Can you get that? Assault and not murder. And they were given five to 15 years. Most likely, they will probably do five. However, you can say the good thing is that they are doing a retrial this year, which is underway. But for those of you who are not familiar with this case, let me give you a reminder. And in this particular video, I had to cut it, the reason being, because it shows uh, the violent beating of Bakari Henderson. And as you know, YouTube would not allow that. New details on the bar fight that cost one American tourist his life. Authorities have arrested several men suspected of killing Bakari Henderson. He was in Zakynthos, Greece, when he got into a fight with a Serbian man at a bar. Security kicked them all out. The brawl spilled into the streets, and several other people jumped in, pounding on Henderson. The Texas native had just graduated from the University of Arizona. Family and friends back home, as you would imagine, are devastated. We've just been trying to share really positive memories of Bakari because there's so many. And, you know, we've even had a couple smiles of all the joy that Bakari's brought to our lives. Henderson's family is expected to arrive there soon on the island. Their son's body will be transferred to a different city for an autopsy. Okay, so the unfortunate thing about this case also is that the, the retrial has been delayed again. Now delayed for how long, we don't really know. But just listen to this. A man who attacked and killed American Bakari Henderson while he was visiting Greece has been delayed again. We expected it to begin this morning. The attack was captured on camera, and we must warn you, the video is upsetting. The 22-year-old... Bakari Henderson's love for life was as deep as his wanderlust. At just 22 years old, the recent college graduate had already traveled the world. But it was on a night out on the Greek island of Sikynthos that his adventurous spirit was brutally cut short. The woman seen in this surveillance video told police she asked to take a selfie with Henderson when a man standing nearby said, there are a lot of Serbians in the bar. Why are you talking to a black guy? What happened next? New details on the bar fight that cost one American tourist his life. Authorities have arrested several men suspected of killing Bakari Henderson. He was in Zakynthos, Greece, when he got into a fight with a Serbian man at a bar. Security kicked them all out. The brawl spilled into the streets, and several other people jumped in, pounding on Henderson. The Texas native had just graduated from the University of Arizona. Family and friends back home, as you would imagine, are devastated. We've just been trying to share really positive memories of Bakari because there's so many. And, you know, we've even had a couple smiles of all the joy that Bakari's brought to our lives. Henderson's family is expected to arrive there soon on the island. Their son's body will be transferred to a different city for an autopsy. So we can only hope that some justice is done in the end. Now here it goes right here. Murdered over a selfie, retrial approaches and the shocking killing of Texan Bakari Henderson in Greece. Now, if you listen to these stories, it makes it seem like Bakari was there alone. Bakari was not there alone. And I want to take this into a different angle. Because he was actually there with friends 
and he was in the bar with friends. He was not in the bar alone. Bakari Henderson, a college graduate from Austin, Texas, had been traveling in Greece with friends and working on a photography shoot for the um, opening of a clothing line at the time of the attack. In July 2017, video from security cameras at the party resort of Leganos and Zaikitos shows a savage assault. Did you hear that? It shows a savage assault. And these are the men who are responsible for assaulting and murdering Bakari Henderson. Just have a good look at them. Basically, they were upset because he took a photo with a Serbian white woman. And as you heard, one of the guys said, there are other Serbian guys. Why are you taking a photo with a black guy? And this has some parallels to the Emmett Till case or killing. Because remember, Emmett Till reportedly whistled or turned around and looked at a white woman. And Bakari Henderson, unfortunately, got entangled in this tragedy by taking a selfie with the white woman. But I want to bring something to your attention. See all these men right here? Six men attacking one guy? And what's not being told is that Bakari had friends with them. And you really have to wonder, why didn't anyone from his group step in to assist Bukhari? Now, let's take this angle right here, because we're going to go into a different direction, which may upset some people. But then again, I'm here to speak the truth, seeing beyond and through. Bukhari seems like the only time he's ever taken pictures with, with family pretty much. If there were no pictures with family, he pretty much seemed to prefer the company of white individuals, whether they be men or women. And if you go to his social media, which may still be up, you would clearly see that he's hugged up on all of these white people. And this is a mentality of a lot of black people in Texas. What you're going to get is that you're either going to get black people who are basically two types, all accepting, white loving, all lives matter types of black guys, pretty much who prefer the company of white people or you're going to get the opposite. The down-home, pro-black brother, black comes first and foremost, down with my people type of black guy. And Bakari Henderson, just like this guy right here, Jonathan Price. Remember Jonathan from Texas also? Preferred the company of white people, white women. Said he never met a police officer who was racist. He never encountered racism. Ended up having his life taken by a white cop. This speaks to a larger issue of black people who need to be prepared and accept the fact that racism is all around the world. To be honest with you, I thought I read something about Greece and I thought it was, um, you have to be careful with going there because it is known to be racist. But then again, to someone like Bakari Henderson, who seems to be very accepting of white people, it just seems like it didn't matter. And let me say another thing about this beating that he went through. Had he would have been there with black people, with black friends, I can assure you the mentality would have been completely different. Black guys would have definitely intervened and jumped in and assisted. It does not surprise me that the white guys he was with at the bar did not assist, did not try to intervene, 
did not jump in. That just does not surprise me at all. I kind of would have expected that to happen. And, and I'm sure that him being 22 years old, still wet behind the ears, not knowing about life, not knowing about racism, going there thinking that because his white friends in Texas or his community accept him, that this is the way that white people are around the world. All loving, accepting, kind. But he was shown a completely different side. That many white people are not that accepting, are very kind, are loving of black people. That's called putting your guard down. And as a black man in this world, we cannot afford to do that. And murdered over selfie. The girl who did this, I am just wondering, did she take this selfie with him to try to make a boyfriend or one of the guys jealous? We have to be aware of that too. Strange that that would happen, that she would do that, because she would have known the mentality. She would have heard them saying derogatory or dispersing things about black people. So I'm wondering, was she trying to make someone jealous? That has got to be looked at. And this is the reason why people, you know, Jonathan Price found this out. Bukhari, unfortunately, it had to end in a very tragic way with the life being lost. You need to be very careful about this adulation, who you put on the pedestal, who you choose to be friends with. Because a lot of times the ending cannot be that well. Many times it will not be that well. I think that we are ignoring the nature of people and the history of certain groups of people. We're sitting up there going there thinking that, well, because they are nice to us, this is how they are. But a lot of times people like Jonathan Price and Bakari Henderson, white folks are nice to you because you're very passive. You're the passive, all loving, all accepting, putting white people first type of black guy. Someone like me, very much pro-black, down with black causes, down with black people, black people first. I'm willing to bet you that friends of Bakari would not be so friendly with me. I'm not about to put you on a pedestal because you're white. I'm not about to sit up there and want to befriend you because you're white. Putting you first, whether you're male or female. No, that's not going to happen with me. But I'm saying that to say this. When you are a certain type of black guy with a mentality like that, they're going to be nice to you. Because basically you're showing that you're worshiping them as little demigods. And that's what blacks need to be very careful about. You need to be very careful about your surroundings, about where you're going. It says that Bakari was well-traveled. I wonder, has he ever gone to Africa? Because usually when black people prefer white people, it's usually they want to go to Europe, to European destinations, to be around European people. And it's almost like they have this um, allergic reaction of going to some place like Africa or maybe the Bahamas or where there are a large percentage of black people. Now I'm saying this to say, I'm not saying that he deserved what he got. That's not at all what I'm saying because that was just horrific. And it reminds me of the junior case in New York City, the bodega, where the little 16-year-old ran up inside there, you know, for help. And the owners there uh, threw him outside, told him to get out, and he faced a mob. It kind of like reminded me of, Bakari's case reminds me of that, where he was inside the bar and they threw him out there. And to me, it's just horrifying that he was there alone to face Six, seven guys who are jumping him. One of them had brass knuckles that hit him in the head, cracked his skull. None of his white friends jumped in. None of them intervened. None of them did anything. As I said before, black friends would never have behaved in that particular manner. They would never have just stood by and watched in horror. We probably would have jumped in. We would have jumped in. We would have assisted. Something about a black guy... Our friends being brutalized by a mob of white guys is not something that we're going to sit idly by and just watch and just take 
you've been taken out. That's why, you know, people, it is very important that you choose the right people and not just white people. You can clearly see that Bakari Henderson had a preference for white people. And where did that get him? It got him six feet under. It, it got his family grieving. You know, it's a shame that this had to have happened. But we have to be very conscious and cognizant of where we're going, who we are going with. And we must remember, above all that, not every place our white person is going to be accepting of us. Not every place is going to like us. This is a picture of Bakari Henderson right there. Go to the far right and count four down. You'll see Bakari, the only black guy there, in a t-shirt with glasses on. Look at all his friends there. This is another picture right there. Go to the far right and count four down. You see Bukhari with binoculars with a white shirt. Look at all his friends there. Now, I'm not saying that he was with that many in Greece, but he was there with a group of people, with a group of buddies there. No one intervened. And it's really strange how the family is not calling this out. They're not really wondering, why didn't you assist my son, who you called a friend? Would I say they're responsible for that? No, they're not responsible for that, but um, wouldn't you bear a slight responsibility for not rendering help to a buddy? If anything, that would make you not that good of a friend. So I think that we need to be very careful as to who we choose to call friends and make friends. Because not every so-called friend is going to be there in your time of need. And remember again, choose the right person and not the white person. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Sam Beyond and Through with Monty. And I will see you all beyond and through.